Welcome to AADT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations, Week 3, Digital Game-Based Learning, Video Clip 3 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapralos, and over the next few minutes, we'll be discussing the Learning Pyramid. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number 1, what is the Learning Pyramid? Number 2, at what level of the Learning Pyramid does the lowest level of knowledge retention occur at? Number three, at what level of the learning pyramid does the highest level of knowledge retention occur at? And finally, number four, what is the controversy associated with the learning pyramid? An overview of the learning pyramid. In the early 1960s, the National Training Laboratories, or NTL for short, in the United States developed what's known as the learning pyramid. The learning pyramid identifies the average level of knowledge retention that is achieved when information is delivered in various formats. So, for example, when it is read, when it is presented in an audio-visual type format, when it is practiced through doing, amongst others. The learning pyramid states that transmission-oriented learning activities, where students are passive listeners or observers, as is common in many traditional learning environments, the lowest levels of knowledge retention occur. And activities that require students to discuss the information, apply the knowledge, and demonstrate the knowledge provide the highest levels of knowledge retention. Now here's a graphical summary of the learning pyramid. And as you can see, when we have a lecture type activity, it leads to an average retention level of 5%, reading 10%, audiovisual 20%, demonstration 30%, where the educator, for example, is demonstrating something to the learners. These four modes are basically traditional passive learning common in the majority of the lectures that we see currently. When we have active learning, so for example, discussion groups, that leads to 50% average retention level. Practice by doing, 75% average retention level. And finally, teaching others or immediate use of what it is you're trying to learn leads to a 90% retention level. This diagram was adapted from the United States National Training Laboratories in Bethel, Maine. The learning pyramid itself it is somewhat controversial and debated. The source of the learning pyramid is sometimes disputed, but according to the NTL, it was developed and used by the NTL at Bethel Main Campus in the early 60s. However, NTL no longer has and can no longer find the original research that supports the stated numbers. So this has left a shadow in many educators' minds. Is this valid or is it not? In 1954, a similar pyramid with slightly different numbers appeared on page 43 of a book called Audiovisual Methods in Teaching. In this earlier version of the pyramid, reading leads to 10% retention level. Hearing a lecture about a specific topic leads to 20% retention level. Looking at an exhibit, a mock-up, a diagram, or a display leads to 30% retention level. Watching live demos, videos, or movies, or going to some site visit leads to 50% retention level. Completing worksheets, manuals, and discussion guides, 70% retention level. And finally, simulating a real experience, practice with coaching or doing the real thing, leads to a 90% retention level. This modified pyramid was adapted from the NTL Institute for Applied Behavioral Sciences in 1954. I think it's important to point out that simulation does lead to a, the highest retention level at 90%. Here's some further information regarding the myths and misconceptions of the learning pyramid. The blog of Eric Cohen from Fundersanding.com provides an interesting discussion on why the learning pyramid is not valid. And in his blog, he also has a link to a YouTube video where he describes this in greater detail. It is also worth noting that both the learning pyramid and the modified learning pyramid predate the internet and the millennials. Furthermore, some of the concepts discussed within the context of the learning pyramid were also discussed with respect to the millennials. For example, we discussed how millennials find traditional lecture type learning and teaching environments as very boring and they prefer learning by doing. Yet, these same concepts are fundamental to the learning pyramid which date back to the 1950s and 1960s. Whether you agree with or refute the learning pyramid, it's worth noting that its fundamental concepts, and more specifically how traditional lecture type environments are not as effective as learning by doing, 
were known and discussed prior to the millennials. This brings us to the end of this video clip and to our list of synthesis questions. Number one, there's plenty of skepticism regarding the learning pyramid, and some have also claimed it is not valid and even called it a myth or a hoax. Do you think it is valid or not valid? Explain your answer. Number two, discuss how we can validate or refute the learning pyramid. Number three, what level or levels of the learning pyramid do serious games lie on? And finally, number four, how much of a role does the learner and context have on retention rates? And this leads us to the end of video clip three. Thank you.